circumference of a circle and divide it by its diameter. What you will get is a miraculous number called pi. It goes on like this. And here is the graph showing how it was discovered throughout the history. The story started with the ancient Babylonians and Chinese discovered the first decimal. And it goes on with the Archimedes and many more scientists uh, working on the topic. And many more methods were discovered uh, during this uh, approximation. However, in this video, I want to talk about two masses. And one is a lot smaller than the other one. And there is a wall with infinite mass. The world is frictionless and the collisions happen elastic. The big one is coming with a velocity. Now, you know what? Let's simulate this with some code. A few lines of code later. Yes, welcome to the computer world. So here are our masses demonstrated as green squares. Now let's convert this dynamic problem to a geometric problem so to visualize and understand the collisions better. Let's create an analytical plane and try to figure out the relation between the speeds of the squares. And naming our x and y axes like these, we can form a perfect circle with our energy equation. And don't forget this, if there's a circle, then there's a pi. We surely know that our starting point is here. And after the first collision, we should draw the graph of our second equation, the conservation of momentum which should have a slope of negative square root of big M divided by the square root of small m. Then find the intersection point of our graphs for the positions after the collision. After that, when our small mass collides to the wall, graph should continue like this since its velocity changes its direction only. Short of the long, our graph continues like so, but it has to end somewhere. Notice all the arc lengths are the same, and at the end point, it's shorter. Therefore, we can basically say that this problem is all about how many of these arc lengths you can fit in the 2 pi, the circumference of a circle. Or n times theta is less than pi, where the decimals of your n gives you the pi number itself. Since the tangent of a very small value is approximate to that value itself, we can take the theta as arctan of our mass ratio square rooted, or the inverse and the negative version of our slope. So, if you keep the theta as tiny as possible, in other words, m as big as possible, more of the decimals you can discover. Awesome! I believe this is how the universe can hide the wonders in simplicity. And actually, I think, even though not being very efficient, this method is very stunning, just as the others.